Next, Barbara faces the painful truth about her son. He had demons, but drugs are a disease to be treated like any other disease. Later, Barbara throws oh, herself into her work to avoid her pain. You are also the biggest slob in the whole world. When Lifetime's Intimate Portrait continues. We now return to Lifetime's Intimate Portrait of Barbara Eden. Known to the world as everyone's favorite genie, Barbara Eden lost her own personal wish for a happy marriage and more children. After her divorce from her second husband, Chuck Fagert, she returned to Los Angeles and began spending more time with her family. She was there for her niece, Catherine, when her mother died. And I remember at the funeral her saying, you know, you always have me. I'm always here. And without that, I don't, you know, that day resonated with me and the way she said it, it was such sincerity and love and I knew that wasn't something a platitude that someone else would say to you while Barbara lent support to her niece she remained devoted to her son Matthew he was in high school during that time he was living with his father of course I didn't have the hassle of the homework and the you know um, but he was a joy and um, my mother lived with me at that time and Matt would come on the weekends but as Matthew entered college, Barbara began to notice a dramatic change in her son when she realized he was using drugs. You know, the people who don't use drugs or who aren't around them a lot don't really recognize it at all. I had no idea. I saw a difference in his physical appearance. Um, he was you know always very body conscious but you could tell one time he'd be thin and then the next time he'd be very built they're so slick they, they do they can be using right under your nose and you wouldn't know it it's not like they're falling down drunk they're not they're just sleeping a lot and then suddenly it hit us one day and we realized it after discovering Matthew's addiction Barbara sought help for herself and her son. She did go to Al-Anon. She went to Tough Love. She's tried every method there was. But you can't fault Barbara. She tried everything she could. While coping with Matthew's addiction, Barbara was single, living back in Los Angeles, and starting work on another NBC series. The show was Harper Valley PTA, and her acting role of an outspoken, beer-drinking single mother showed another side of her acting talent and was a great departure from her character, Jeannie. Stella Johnson was, yeah, she was the opposite of Jeannie, I guess. Single mom, spoke her piece, liked, liked her beer once in a while. Um, it was very liberating. <laughs> Harper Valley PTA was short-lived and went off the air after the second season. Throughout the 80s, Barbara kept busy. She even reappeared with her old sidekick Larry Hagman on Dallas. During this period in her life, she stuck close to home and cared for her son and beloved mother Alice, who had been diagnosed with lung cancer. Alice lived in Barbara's house, so Barbara was there taking care of her, you know, and sort of put her life on hold to be there for her mother. Not only were they mother and daughter, but they were best friends. Barbara lost her main source of support and inspiration when Alice Huffman died on November 12th, 1986. I know Barbara still hasn't gone back to the grave. It's too hard for her, you know, to have Alice gone. After her mother's death, Barbara went back to work in a TV movie called I Still Dream of Jeannie. This time she exposed her navel. She also co-starred with Jenny Garth in A Brand New Life. Working with Barbara was a great experience. She taught me a lot about uh, being professional. She taught me a lot about the technical aspects of working in television. She was a great mentor sort of figure for me. And who better to have one of my first jobs with? Taking more and more work, even Barbara's neighbors noticed how busy she was. Sometimes I wish I had a nickel for every limousine that pulls up in front of the house to take her somewhere. Her hectic schedule didn't leave much time for dating until one fateful blind date in 1989 with a real estate developer, John Eicholtz, changed everything. I was initially attracted, attracted to Barbara because... Um, of her intelligence, her work ethic, um, and being one of the nicest persons I'd ever met. He came along in a very, very, she was at a 
kind of a low point. You know, her mother was gone. So, and that was a low point for her. John always radiated to women who were very, very basic and very warm and very... Uh, there was never... A, John was never a person who was star-struck. Before meeting Barbara, John had never even seen an episode of I Dream of Jeannie. I was working 12 hours a day and six days a week, and I didn't get in the habit of watching television. But uh, I took the time to uh, watch some reruns of I Dream of Jeannie uh, at the time I started dating Barbara. As their dating progressed, John and Barbara took a trip to Egypt. The trip was so romantic that John capped off the vacation with a marriage proposal. Barbara said yes, and in 1991, the couple was married in San Francisco's Grace Cathedral, the same church Barbara had attended as a child. The marriage won overwhelming approval from her sister and friends. I think this is a wonderful marriage, and she's very happy. Finding Barbara and marrying Barbara and having the opportunity to spend the time with her that I have is probably the luckiest, most fortunate thing that's happened to me. And I, I think I'm extremely lucky to uh, have found him. He's very supportive of what I do and what I want to do. He was supportive of Matthew. John's support enabled Barbara to bring in the 90s on a positive note as she acted, traveled, and received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. She shared all of this lovingly with her son Matthew, who on the outside appeared to be tackling his drug habit. Matthew had his own demons. And, um, uh, you know, everybody tries to work out to the best of their ability uh, to, you know, make their life a little better. And um, it just comes easier to some people than others. Matthew's struggle was also his mother's struggle. But she persevered and kept busy. She appeared in more than a dozen TV movies and television commercials. And she accompanied Bob Hope on a USO tour of the Persian Gulf, where she was joined by Matthew. In 1995, I Dream of Jeannie debuted on Nick at Night, introducing a whole new generation to Jeannie. Matthew continued making strides in remaining clean and sober. He became so obsessed with his physical image that he entered and won a Los Angeles bodybuilding contest. His love life was on track too, as he was engaged to be married. Life was good. He was getting married in September, and we were all so happy. Matt's gotten his life together. The excitement in the Eden household was soon to be shattered by one horrific event. I got the phone call at 8 o'clock in the morning. I went, John? And at first I thought maybe something happened to Barbara. And then he told me and I said, no. No, it's not possible. On June 25th, 2001, Matthew was found at the wheel of his pickup truck. He had died of a heroin overdose. Well, Matthew's passing away was, was a shock to everybody. It was uh, unexpected to say the least. and. Uh, uh, there was no reason to think that something was wrong. He was fighting it. He was trying very hard. Um, and this last incident, um, the police told me it was a mistake. The stuff on the streets now, I guess, is so much stronger than when he quit. And he didn't realize that. And all it took was one shot, and he was gone. Matthew was very, very close to Barbara. They talked constantly even if she was on the road I like him as a man he's a very um, sincere person he was deep um, I probably also liked him because of his respect for his mother and and their relationship and love for each other as he grew older uh, I think he he and his mom had an even closer bond because uh, uh, he uh, learned to understand how much she loved him and how much uh, he loved her. You know, Barbara doesn't really talk about it a lot. 
she she's the type of person that sort of pulls it in and keeps it to herself and and has her takes her sadness alone and you ask her something yeah. that's fine but she won't bring up no. personal subjects I can tell when Barbara's low I'll call her and I can hear it in her voice and we'll talk about it but I don't bring up the subject and then I say, well, maybe I should, because not discussing something that happened in the past that was fun is not fair either to Matt. So you want to remember him. You don't want to forget him. He was part of my life. He was part of everyone who knew him. And what we get in this light, it isn't things. What you get is memories. And hopefully those memories are pretty ones, happy ones. But when all is said and done, when it's all taken away from you, you have only the memories. I don't know how she does it. I can't even tell you how she does it. I can't even imagine how she does it. But she does do it. And there are times that she breaks down, but she goes on. She has to go on. Well, I hope um, that I can get it together and uh, and discuss it because I do think I do think people have to know about this. But um, but I can't do it right now.